as you know today the whole world is passing from a very worse condition comparing to other countries somehow india is safe by blessing of god as you know our pm has declared 21 days lockdown period so during this period we cannot go outside and we have to stay at our home but our school's trustee sir and principal ma'am as you know always worry about the study of students and especially for standard 10th and 12th student they suggested the teachers of divan life school to make a video lecture so today i will take a video lecture of standard 10 science biology section chapter number 6 for the exam point of view this chapter is very very important from this chapter i will take a topic of human digestive system is the most important and where and a uh, four mark question frequently asked into the board examination so uh, the name of the chapter is life processes so what is life processes life process that means the process which are occurring into the our body during our lifetime that is called the life process ultimately the process by which we can alive those processes are are called life processes and apart from and apart from this processes one of the processes is nutrition in human and that is human digestive system so today we will talk about the human digestive system so you can see the schematic diagram of human digestive system so let's start about the human digestive system so human digestive system is consist of elementary canal and associated glands elementary canal consist of some organs which are called digestive organs the first one is mouth also figures stomach small intestine large intestine anus and these are the some associated glands which are helping in digestion of the food so three associated glands are there salivary glands pancreas and liver so now start with the mouth how the food is digested and how the food is absorbed into the blood so first start let's start with the mouth mouth contain teeth tongue and salivary gland what is the function of teeth tongue and salivary gland teeth teeth helps in the chew, helps to chew the food and convert the bigger particles of the food into smaller particles tongue tongue mix the food with the saliva so the food particles would be weighted and could be easily swallowable and especially the most important thing in the mouth that is the salivary gland salivary gland secretes a water type liquid that is called saliva saliva contain enzyme amylase this enzyme amylase digest starch into simple sugar see starch is a one type of carbohydrate so first time the carbohydrate is digested into the mouth by the help of the enzyme amylase amylase digest starch in two simple sugar like glucose and maltose so here the food is partially digested after that food is entered into the stomach through the esophagus so the function of the esophagus is see this is the food this is the mouth buccal cavity and this is the esophagus so from the mouth food is entering into the stomach through this pipe that is called food pipe or esophagus now when the food is entered into the stomach then what happens stomach stomach in the stomach food remains about 3 to 4 hours and during this time period food starts churning churning that means mixing so during this uh, periods wall of the stomach see these are the wall of the stomach these wall of the stomach play an important role in the digestion of the food this wall of the stomach secrete gastric juice which juice gastric juice this gastric juice contains dilute hcl mucus and pepsin this gastric juice contain dilute hcl mucus and pepsin now see the role of all these three things see dilute hcl what is the function of dilute hcl dilute hcl kill the bacteria or other microorganisms which are entering in, into the stomach along with the food and also provides the acidic medium and also provide the acidic medium into the stomach this acidic medium is very very essential for the action of the pepsin 
Now see, pepsin is a enzyme which is responsible for the digestion of the protein. So protein is first time digested into the stomach. Again, pepsin for the activation of pepsin, acidic environment is essential. So this acidic environment is created by this HCl. And when the acidic environment is created, this pepsin become activated and digest the protein. Now the mucus, what is the function of the mucus? Mucus is making a protective layer along this, the wall of the stomach, along this, the wall of the stomach. So this protective layer prevent the damage of the wall of the stomach from this HCl, from this HCl. So mucus providing the pro or creating the protective layer for the stomach. Now after that the food is entering into the small intestine. So when the food is entering into the small intestine one muscle is very very important which are playing an important role that is the sphincter muscle that is the sphincter muscle. So exit of the food from the stomach exit of the food from the stomach is regulated by sphincter muscle. So sphincter muscle is present over here. So by the help of this muscle food is entered into the small intestine from the stomach. Now small intestine very very important part of the digestive system because here the digestion is completed and it is the largest part of the elementary canal. It is the largest part of the elementary canal. Now it is a site for the complete digestion. Complete digestion that means here the digestion is completed. Now what happens? When the food is entered into the small intestine and when it reaches to the small intestine, liver and pancreas, see this is the liver and this is the pancreas. Liver and pancreas secrete their juices. Liver secrete bile juice and pancreas secrete pancreatic juice. See, what is the function of this bile juice? As you know, the in the stomach, the medium is acidic due to HCl. But when it reaches to the small intestine, it should be alkaline. It should be alkaline. Why it should be alkaline? It should be alkaline because pancreatic juice contains some enzymes. And these enzymes always activated into the alkaline medium. So for the activation of the pancreatic enzymes, it should be, food should be alkaline into the small intestine. So this thing is done by this liver because liver secrete the bile juice from this bile duct. This bile juice make the food alkaline and another function of the bile juice is to digest fat globules, fat globules, lipids. Yeah. Okay. After that, pancreas, pancreas secrete pancreatic juice. Pancreatic juice, pancreatic juice contain two enzymes, trypsin and lipase. Trypsin and lipase. What is the function of trypsin and what is the function of lipase? See. Trypsin digest protein. Trypsin digest protein. And lipase digest lipid. Lipase is an enzyme which helps in the digestion of the lipid. Now, another thing is that the wall of this small intestine, this wall of this small intestine is also secreting juice. That is called the intestinal juice. That is called intestinal juice. And intestinal juice is also containing some enzymes. These enzymes digest protein carbohydrate and fat so this enzyme digests protein into amino acid carbohydrate into glucose and fats into fatty acid and glycerol again intestinal juice contain enzymes these enzymes are of three types one enzyme digests protein that is proteolytic enzyme which digests protein into the amino acid another is enzyme another enzyme is which digest carbohydrate into glucose simple sugar and another enzyme digest fat fat that means lipid so lipid into fatty acid and glycerol now here the digestion is completed now what happens after the digestion the absorption part is started now how the food digested food is absorbed into the inner wall of small intestine there is a small finger like projections are there finger like projections are there. These finger like projections are called will. Are called will. So 
villi is a finger like projection which absorbs the digested food which absorbs the digested food and this digested food assimilated into the blood assimilated into the blood and through the blood it will reach to the all different organs of the body and because of that we will get energy now after that undigested food is entering into the large intestine see in small intestine digestion is completed now further digestion will not be happen so undigested food enters into the large intestine see this is the large intestine and in this large intestine from undigested food water is absorbed water is absorbed and the remaining waste material is removed from the body through the anus so this is the overview of human digestive system so again uh, i am repeating that it is a very very important questions regarding the exam point of view so students this is not the brief uh, explanation but it is a superficial explanation clear so uh, if you have the book then read this question carefully so you can remember it and uh, uh, within 2 to 3 days i will also take a video lecture of maths physics and chemistry also so uh, the last message is that from the divan life school on the behalf of divan life uh, international school uh, be safe stay at home thank you